Welcome to Episode 8 of Road Ready. An engine in good operating condition needs two things to run properly, adequate fuel supply and adequate ignition or spark. In Episode 3, we discussed engine condition and went through a major tune-up, electrical and ignition spark. For this episode, we'll take on the second half of what makes an engine run properly, and that is the fuel supply system and the fuel injectors on a fuel injection engine. Fuel pressure and fuel volume are equally important. Pressure testing and volume flow gauges are available as kits. Whether you buy an expensive kit or an inexpensive kit, the aim is to determine whether the fuel supply from the fuel tank to the fuel injector rail is sufficient in both pressure and the actual volume of fuel flow. This gauge is connected directly to the test port on the fuel injection rail. These adapters fit a variety of fuel injector rail test ports and rail fittings. We picked this SUR&R FPT pressure tester kit for its ability to test faulty fuel pumps, pressure regulators, fuel lines, and check valves. You can also tell whether a fuel filter, or in the case of many fuel tanks, the pickup sock, is clogged. There can be adequate pressure without adequate flow volume, and a pickup sock can often be the source of that trouble. A clogged pickup sock or fuel filter can restrict fuel volume flow. Road Ready is all about keeping your vehicle running in top shape, or in many cases, just plain keeping your vehicle. In order to do so, you need quality tools, like this pressure testing and fuel volume kit. This kit is designed to work with gasoline engines only. The 1999 Jeep XJ Cherokee 4-liter inline 6-cylinder engine is a single rail fuel injection system. It has no damper and the fuel regulator is at the fuel tank. The pressure regulator is actually part of the fuel pump module. Pressurized fuel comes out of the pump, goes through the regulator, and the excess pressure or volume is returned to the fuel tank. The pressurized fuel in normal pressure moves to the fuel rail where it can be read at the Schrader valve test port. Actual fuel pump pressure and volume output in an EFI system is always much higher than the actual regulated pressure at the rail. To perform these tests, we're concentrating on the pressure at the rail and the fuel volume to the rail. Troubleshooting and diagnostics work always begins with a reference from the factory workshop manual. In this case, we need to know the pressure that we should be reading at the rail. And for this particular engine, the pressure is 49.2 PSI plus or minus 5 PSI. This pressure will remain constant as it reflects the pressure of the fuel pump and the regulated pressure from the pressure regulator. The pump is electric. It's a motor that spins at a constant speed. That speed does not vary due to the demands for fuel at the engine. There is again an overage of fuel always leaving the fuel pump that gets regulated and the excess volume is diverted back into the fuel tank. On a two rail, EFI system. The second rail has a regulator on it. There is no regulator at the fuel pump module. Fuel pressure is regulated at the rail and the excess of volume and pressure is returned to the fuel tank on the second rail. This single rail regulated pressure is reading 47 or so PSI, which is excellent. The pressure is constant and the fuel volume when read at the rail is more than adequate. Note that the fuel volume test is actual gasoline coming out of the rail. This is the amount called for in the factory workshop manual for stock injectors and a stock fuel pump. This is the volume and pressure required for the fuel injectors to flow the proper amount of fuel and have the correct spray patterns when the injectors open and close. For these EFI systems, there is a check valve at the fuel pump module to prevent fuel from draining back from the injectors to the tank when the engine has just been shut off. This enables a fast restart until the pressure has drained down naturally. The pressure should hold 30 PSI for at least 5 minutes after shutting off the engine and ignition. Parked for long periods or especially overnight, fuel will bleed down 
typically to zero overnight. For this reason, I always prime the fuel system by turning the key on momentarily for a couple of seconds before cranking the engine. Here, I am repeating the priming method for three or four tries to get the fuel pressure to rise completely for the pressure test. This is the pressure I want to see. 49.2 PSI plus or minus 5 PSI would be normal. The test you see here is a repeat of the earlier test and is taking place at over 190,000 miles. The fuel pump is reading 46 to 47 PSI as it did with the earlier test and the fuel volume test is equally impressive. The fuel pressure and volume meet the specifications found in the factory workshop manual. Here, the fuel pump volume is tested. Fuel flows into a metal can, in this case a Coleman fuel can, empty and grounded. The fuel is allowed to flow for approximately seven to nine seconds in this mode. Engine shut off. The fuel is poured into a graduated container to get an accurate measurement of how much fuel flowed in the seven to nine second interval. The factory measurement calls for 0 0.250 liter or 250 milliliters. The fuel pump volume meets this requirement. Meanwhile, with the ignition shut off and the engine standing, the fuel pressure has only dropped to 36 PSI, and this is well above 30 PSI at 15 minutes. The anti-drain back check valve at the fuel pump module is obviously working properly and accounts for the fact that this engine has always refired instantly on a restart. Priming would be immediate during cranking. So what's the takeaway from all this? We know that the fuel pump has adequate pressure and that the volume of flow is adequate and that should do it, you think? Well, actually there's more to it than that. We also might want to know just how long is that fuel pump going to last? It has over 190,000 miles on it at this point, and it might be on its way out. Is there any way we would know without dropping the fuel tank and pulling the pump out? Yes, there actually is. There are two tests that we can do, and we're going to save those for episode 9. One of them is to use a scan tool and see how much amperage that electric motor is drawing in the fuel pump when it's under load. If the amperage is beyond the range that's considered normal, there's a possibility that the pump motor is drawing too much amperage because it has too much wear. Beyond that, there's a test that we're going to run that I find really unique, and that would be an oscilloscope test of the fuel pump. We're going to establish a wave pattern that will tell us exactly how much amperage each of the sectors of the commutator are drawing. That's entirely different than the overall motor picture. Remember, again, this pump may be spinning at 6,000 RPM. So to break that down to six or eight sectors, and we'll do some research and know exactly how many sectors there are on the commutator, and know if there's a bad sector that might potentially fail maybe on the Gold Lake Trail or Rubicon Trail if you're driving your Jeep to a location like that. So we're going to look at that closely with an oscilloscope while it's still in the fuel tank, but we're going to save that for episode 9. See you then.